Hi everyone, welcome. Let's wait a bit for a, a few more people to join and then um, we can start this session. So, hello, I think we're, uh, everyone's here, well, almost everyone uh, actually, and um, welcome. Um, I'm happy to be your host uh, today and that you're here to join me for the webinar uh, called Mastering the Hybrid Work Balance Strategies for Success. Uh, for those who are also present at our webinar about ESG in the workplace, great to see you back. And for everyone who is new here, welcome, and I'm ha happy to find that you have found your way towards this, uh, to today's webinar. Um, let me introduce myself shortly. My name is Enizia Cario Di Nomo, and I'm a Partner Success Manager at Spacewell. I'm responsible for both partner for all the partners of Spacewell, and I'm in direct contact with our partners, but also with their end clients to understand their needs in the market, but also hear what is happening uh, and understanding what the, what the needs are of our clients. Um, at Spacewell, uh, we are focused on making buildings work for people. Uh, with marketing leading digital solutions, uh, we support our customers to improve the performance and sustainability of your building portfolios, but also looking at well-being, portfolio and productivity of the people using these buildings and obviously the quality of the service delivered to them. But let me just switch to where we're going to what we're going to talk about today. So the topic of today's webinar is mastering the hybrid work balance. Uh, and we're going to look at a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, a little bit of an insight on the future of work trends and insights, um, but also looking at workplace productivity in the hybrid model. Uh, and I think most importantly, I'm going to deep dive uh, into the guidelines and best practices for, ma for managing a hybrid workplace. Um, and I'm going to give you a real life example from the market, something that we have done with Spacewell. And lastly, we will end with a Q&A session. Um, why this topic? I think it's also important to mention that because we see that many companies are finding it challenging to manage and balance their hybrid workplace. Um, one of the biggest difficulties lies in addressing the different preferences and needs of employees while maintaining productivity, culture, collaboration, and all those kind of things. Um, some employees appreciate the flexibili flexibility an autonomy of uh, working remotely, while others may thrive in a structured environment in the office. For every person, is a, it's a bit uh, different. And that's why organizations might, might struggle uh, to create a seamless experience that works for both groups or for the groups that maybe like a bit of a balance of both. Um, and balancing this also requires adapting technology, for example, looking at collaboration tools, uh, but also adapting office spaces and how they're used to ensure productivity, regardless of your location or your preference. Um, and additionally, it can be difficult to maintain um, team cohesion and culture when employees are spread uh, between home and the office or may maybe even flexible workplaces, um, especially with communication uh, and collaboration processes getting a bit more complex. So. The first topic of today, the future of work, the trends and insights. And as you obviously obviously already know, or otherwise you wouldn't be here today, is that there's a strong trend of working from home. Um, companies like Apple and LinkedIn actually are trying to turn that around, wanting employees to go back to the office more and more for productivity. So it's been a widespread issue to get employees back, to, back into the office, especially for big tech companies. Um, but then again, is that the way of working that we need and, and um, is the best way of working? Um, if you look at Apple, for example, they have faced resistance from employees who prefer remote work. Um, Apple's policy to require employees to return to the office three days, days a week actually started back in 2022, but it led to internal pushback. And many employees expressed concerns that the policy was, for example, inf inflexible, uh, particularly because many of them already relocated during the pandemic. But also looking at LinkedIn, one, one another big tech company, they've also experienced challenges managing its hybrid work policy um, because they initially started with full flexibility policy. It later adjusted their policy requiring certain employees to return to the office at least part time. And as you can imagine, this uh, created fi friction among employees who were con yeah who are actually content working uh, remotely 
and felt that the shift back was really unnecessary. Of course, there's been a lot of research and things have changed uh, rapidly during and after uh, COVID. Uh, it's been four years ago already. And um, back then we were obviously pushed to remote fully remote to work fully remote. Um, however, this new way of working was here to stay and companies needed to find a new way to uh, to work together with their employees and, and also for the employees to work together with each other. Um, and for some people, some aspects were improved, but not everything. Um, the two um, slides, you see, well, the slide that you see right now, it's a research from 2022 and 2023, actually a comparison, comparison between the two. And you see that um, obviously this needed some adaption from everyone. Um, and if you look, for example, at communication and culture uh, and distraction and re responsibilities, that really improved in that year. Um, however, technology-wise, such as devices, systems, and connectivity uh, brought some more challenges um, with this. Um, and like I said before, you obviously have to take into account that every employee and every person has their own preferences, right? Um, and that there's not a one way of working that works for everyone. Um, so if you look at the graph in 2022, 50% of the employed adults preferred remote option for work. Whereas a year later, this has increased with 6%. If you look at the right, uh, the right graph. Um, however, there's a large percentage of employees who still prefer completely, mostly in-person working. That's actually the black part in the graph. Um, and they also need to be uh, facilitated in their work. Uh, even though it's actually a bit harder for them to fulfill this wish if you have a hybrid working model, because you, you always have to work together with colleagues that might work remotely uh, that you need to be in contact with in order to do your job well um, so completely in person might be impossible for many of those working in a hybrid working model um, like mentioned before big tech companies like apple are facing backlash um, and you see here a, a, a twitter or x nowadays um, of Ian Goodfellow to quit the company over its return to office policy and his departure highlights actually the tensions between the company and its staff as they ad adapt to these new hybrid working patterns. And this will not only lead to unhappy employees, but eventually companies will also face an additional problem, which is retention and retaining staff, because as well as changing the, pay the way people work, uh, it also has made it easier to change jobs. Um, interviewing, for example, for a new job while working from home is uh, easier. It could be a phone call, it could be a, dis the, a video call, like as, as a first, uh, uh, um, yeah, first get to know each other. Um, while having an interview while working from the office can be way harder because you have to find an excuse um sometimes a dubious excuse to be uh, excused from work and uh, indeed if you look at this survey uh, uh where more than 2000 people were were surveyed 46 percent found it easier to interview for another job while working from home compared to the 23 percent who found it harder so that's another challenge is that 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 uh, hard but working actually brings uh yeah brings with it and if you look at hybrid workplaces, there are actually three things that are most important to take into consideration in order to make it successful. Those are three things, people, space, and technology. The people are obviously the most important in the workplace as the people form the community uh, within the organization. Also, every person has a different way of working, has a different role. Um, they need different facilities. Um, but if we talk about people, we also talk about the transparency within the um, within the company, within an organization, or the culture within the organization, but also the communication and how people work together. Secondly, we have space, um, which does not necessarily refer to the physical location, such as an office. Um, like most of the companies still have physical offices, but it also relates to the context in which people are working, such as uh, flexible hotel and co-working spaces, uh, or the geography of, of, of the employee. Where is this person living? Uh, and what are the possibilities in that space? But also working from a hotel while on uh, while being abroad and those kind of things. 
different sort of space are also needed for different people or for different tasks. Um, think of example of companies saying that the office is only a meeting place, whereas your home office is the place where you do focused work. Um, then lastly, of the three aspects uh, is technology. And I wanna go a bit deeper on this aspect because um, and that's one of the, um, yeah, one of the aspects that is, is in many cases taken for granted. Uh, and I'm not only talking about technology such as internet, laptop, uh, a Teams or Zoom connection, those kind of things, but also technology um, which is present in buildings. If you look at technology in your building, we there's like four um, grades of, of what how, how technology uh, is implemented in your building. Um, because not all buildings that are connected are connected buildings or intelligent buildings, uh, but many of them are. Technologies such as IoT, Internet of Things, or artificial intelligence, um, but also the infrastructure created by technology is an important pillar. Um, technology in your building can contribute to a successful hybrid working model. Um, it really supports, is able to support a hybrid working model. If you look at the four, um, yeah, the the in in what way you can implement technology in your building, you have four layers basically. If you look at the first one, a connected building is most of the time most companies fall in this category. A connected building forms a foundation basically, such as basic IT networks, um, um, commonplace technology which you find in the standard office, such as there's laptops, there's an a, an internet connection, and those kind of things. If you take it a level higher, you go to an, an intelligent building, whereas an intelligent building with system integration, uh, energy efficiency, but also building automation, like an intelligent building is what most companies actually strive for, uh, for next le level smart building processes. Um, it can lead to more unified collaboration, better asset management, and streamlined workplace and remote services. And then another layer on top of that is a smart building. Um, and the smart building includes, for example, open architecture, occupant interaction, but also predictive analysis to understand what is going to happen in your uh, in your building, um, which actually contributes to human centric workplace metrics, uh, but also on demand services, but also um, the data that you can use uh, in order to make your building or your organization smarter or more efficient. Um, the future of work is already here. Um, and smart buildings should be a consideration for most companies um, because they also support hybrid work environments. Um, the focus be, will be on creating smart buildings is what we're gonna see that accommodate people's needs. And like said before, people, everyone's need is a bit different. Um, in the past, smart buildings meant batch readers, thermostat controls, um, and lighting, um, being able to switch on the light on and off from a distance. Uh, or when you walk in a room, um, but today smart building is way more about uh, contact tracing, uh, people density monitoring, uh, being able to have interactive capabilities for people who, for remote participants in meetings, for example. Um, so, for example, being able to reserve a room remotely doesn't only make a building smart, but being able to monitor the capacity for the health and safety aspect does um, and again it's also a way to embrace sustainability then we have the last one it's the cognitive building uh, which goes a step further here machine learning artificial intelligence and robotics are the vital pieces that that drive the building automation basically um, most non-technology technology companies do not actually strive for this level uh, but I think it's important to, to know that there are possibilities there um, to really go uh, to that level of, of your building. Okay, but how does workplace productivity um, affect the hybrid model? Um, so we shifted to remote first in most cases um, instead of the other way around. Um, and it's important to understand what the benefits are uh, but also the challenges of hybrid work and how you can tackle these. 
um, there is a lot of research done on 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 the um, advantages of hybrid working, such as better quality of sleep, uh, being able to get more exercise, uh, better health in overall, and obviously these aspects um, contribute to a better uh, productivity. Obviously, if you look at research that's done by Gallup, um, Gallup actually asked the following question. Since you began your hybrid work arrangement, which of the following positive impacts on your work have you noticed? Um, and you see here um, the top five. So for the first one, for example, that means that 71% of the people who filled in the survey have um, uh, stated that this was uh, one of the advantages. Uh, so on top, you see that it's an improved work-life balance. Also, the aspects, what I aspects that I just mentioned, better sleep quality, better exercise, etc. These contribute to your uh, work-life balance, but also more efficient use of time, freedom to choose when and where I work, um, less work burnout or fatigue, and higher productivity. I think these are all very important to take into account for uh, adopting and actually improving a hybrid working model, because I think in many cases, the hybrid working model is already adopted, um, but improving is, I think, where, where we are now. Um, but of course, it also brings challenges, right? It's, it's not only positive impacts, uh, there are also some negative impacts that we face with introducing or adopting a, a hybrid model. Uh, of which some do have effect on the productivity of the employees, such as a reduced cross-functional communication and collaboration. Um, and another example is, for example, the disrupted processes um, and more difficult to coordinate work schedules, work schedules, tasks, and timelines. And again, I'm saying it again, it also depends on what kind of person you are, what do you prefer, uh, what's your personality, and where, what do you use uh, what do you need for facilities to be able to uh, um, perform your work? Um, we've seen that working from the office has its own advantages, of course, but so does working from home and people expect some kind of hybrid work agreement nowadays. Um, and that it's going to be a mix of working from home or from the office is in most ca cases the solution. Um, but I think it's important to know that, uh, like, how can you keep the balance and maintain efficiency across remote and office work? Um, if you look at some of these challenges, these, these can obviously be um, um, tackled with, for example, implementing the right technology tools or having a workplace or building that works for you. But I think it's important to look at um, based on these advantages and challenges, it is important to look at what is actually needed to manage a hybrid workplace. So what are some guidelines and best practices in here? And um, although many current statistics indicate that remote work boosts productivity, uh, many employers remain concerned about maintaining efficiency with teams working from home. Um, and also employers and managers uh, of remote teams can keep workplace on track by evaluating remote remote workers needs the same way they would in the office encourage and that would encourage efficient practices and giving them the technical tools they need to collaborate and if everyone's properly equipped for example with the right materials such as laptops uh, headphones those kind of things uh, and uh, connected remote teams can often excel in ways that a traditional office environment does not permit if you look at uh, how to manage the hybrid work, uh, workplace, there is actually four things that you should take into consideration um, where to improve your hybrid workplace. One is encourage in-home workspaces. And what I mean with that and what is meant by that is actually, as we, I think all of us experienced in the beginning, our workspaces were kitchen tops, couches, coffee tables. We were actually excited to work uh, in your own bed but for not ev and not everyone had a profession a professional homework office. However, being able to provide a good home uh, office uh, environment for for your employees that can affect productivity over time. Um, for employees, for example, have a permanent arrangement to work from home or work from home most of the time. Um, employers should encourage employees to prepare a dedicated workspace in the house, and maybe even worth it's maybe even worth to invest and contribute to make. For example, office-style chairs available 
uh, and those kind of things, or be able to, um, to provide a second screen um, to your employers. If you look at the right digital tools, it might feel very logical, but it's really important to have the right tools in order to be able to work hybridly. Um, obviously, internet connection on a proper laptop, but also think of the, the software to be able to work efficiently. Many of us work, uh, use Teams, for example, or Google Workspaces, and these tools um, provide actually the means to be able to work efficiently, but also work together. Um, but equipping your teams with the right tech stack to stay connected in real time in real time encourages also a work culture of collaboration, even when remote. Um, and when employees collaborate, they create shared responsibility, boosting efficiency. Um, looking at the third one, the regular, maybe even daily check-in, um, I think that is important to feel part of the team. Although remote work can often boost productivity and decrease work-related burnout, it also reduces social interaction, uh, both work-focused fo or not. Uh, and leaving some employees feeling less motivated because they feel less um, part of a team and having daily check-ins or virtual events to com contribute to this feeling um, and less having the sense of isolation um, that employees may feel when working rem remotely is really something you should consider uh, to improve the, the hybrid workplace. Um, and lastly, adopt flexibility in work hours. Office spaces back back in the days were assigned had assigned desks, for example, and cubicles operating from, for example, eight thirty till five, um, and actually represented a one size fits all solution for everyone who worked there. Um, remote remote works work obviously opens up those possibilities, um, and um, and it makes uh, yeah it works differently for everyone. Uh, some people are, for example, productive early in the morning, even before traditional office working hours, and others might find it find their maximum productivity in the evening or late at night. Uh, so focus more on uh, on the quality of work rather than the quantity of hours that are worked in the office space. Um, if you look at the four points on the slide before, I want to um, put it in a bit more context as in best practices, uh, breaking them down in a few topics. Um, so the first one is uh, very important to, to agree upon, having clear communication strategies. Um, think of the mixed, yeah, there's a lot of mixed communication tools uh, for both remote and in-office employees. Of course, you have the in-person, but there's WhatsApp, there's email, there's chat, there's everything. Um, think of setting up guidelines of what channels to use for different types of communication. Meetings, of course, obviously, is also a communication strategy, but having that clear um, for your employers, I think that that um, gives uh, rest in, uh, yeah, in how to communicate. Um, again, technology integration, um, not only just the software to be able to cooperate and collaborate uh, or communicate, Right, but also, as mentioned before, the smart building solutions to enhance the experience at the office or even while not in the office, but understanding what's in the office. Uh, flexible work policies. Um, like I said before, lay more emphasis on clear output expectations rather than being rigid about hourly requirements. Team building something that's sometimes overlooked it can be physical activities but also regular check-ins or digital coffees uh, to give you a personal example me and my team uh, we have a what we call have a nice weekend call on friday at uh, at 4 30 p.m and just to wrap up the week uh, with the team talk with each other about the weekend plans um we also rather not talk about work uh, because we had enough meetings in that week together to talk about work and operational kind of uh, stuff, but really um, just wrapping up the week, uh, wishing each other a, a nice weekend. And for me, this really adds up for for being part of for be for feeling to be a part of a team. Um, employee well-being again, promoting work-life balance adds to the employee well-being, uh, encouraging them. Um, between their work hours and personal lives, really to be able to balance them. Um, 
performance measurement. Um, I think this factor is very crucial to um, to establish a sound work culture. As an employer, you must be clear, uh, equally clear to both remote, remote workers, to um, in-person workers, but also the one who have the hybrid model um, about performance expectations, the goals and their metrics. Uh, and I think what's important uh, to add upon that is consistent open discussions to leave no space for invisibility and to stay transparent. Personal development, again, give equal opportunities to both remote and office working employees uh, regarding their prof professional journey. Um, be able to provide both in-person training, but also the digital version so you can facilitate, facilitate both groups. Um, security and compliance. This might feel a little bit less important for the employee itself, but however, it is important to take responsibility to ensure it, for example, with cybersecurity training uh, and to inform the employees on how to mitigate risks they are exposed to when working remotely. Um, feedback. Um, I think feedback is also part of communication, but also part of the transparency within a, a company. Um, especially when the feedback is not taken for granted, uh, but really just implemented in the workplace. Um, and establishing a regular feedback system is where you can gather input uh, from the employees regarding the, for example, the effective working of the hybrid working model, but also other things that you want feedback on in your organization. And it should not only be done by surveys, but also think of the actual data or um, in-person feedbacks with one-on-ones with your manager, for example. And lastly, um, the inclusive culture. Think of policies that practice and ensure inclusivity, more such as celebrating milestones uh, together or really inclusive decision making that you as an employer are able to um, have some sort of influence on the choices that are made within the within the company. So that you really feel part of the of the company and the, the company culture. Um, lastly, I want to give you a real life example from the market. Um, as mentioned in the beginning, we at Spacewell provide technology to transform your building to a smart building. Uh, which will also support hybrid working. I want to note again, technology and having a smart building is just one of the few aspects uh, to have a successful hybrid working model, but it does sub, uh, could possibly uh, support it positively. And in the next few minutes, I will explain a real life case in where one of our solu uh, solutions uh, supported the hybrid working model and how it has affected our customer. Um, so with our client Merck, um, in a proof of concept, uh, um, the Merck group, who is the client, used the digital workplace system in the midst of the pandemic, actually, to provide a secure back to office solution for several buildings uh, in the short term and to set up a workplace management with a view to a changing uh, working world that obviously the hybrid working methods take into account. Um, one of the other aspects that they found important as well was the sustainable energy management. Uh, so for them, it was a two way question. How can we support a hybrid working model, but also how um, can we save on energy? Uh, and with this, with these two questions, actually the workplace system. So one of the products of Spacewell was introduced for a period of four months, firstly for 15 buildings in order to see what they could do with the data. Um, again, it was designed to be sustainable with the help of the, uh, the tool and enable each employee to make a contribution to the entire company benefits. And based on after four months, these analysis of buildings equipped with our solution, um, it was possible to quickly deduce that the occupancy rate of some floors or entire office buildings due to hybrid work, schedules, vacation, sick leave, or other reasons was only 50 to 70% of average. Um, so what they did actually was they switched up nine, uh, they switched off, sorry, nine buildings completely uh, or partially for winter break, um, saving up to 50 to 60% energy by turning off the heating systems, for example, um, and shutting down electrical cir cir circuits that were not 
uh, were not safety relevant. Um, at the same time, the required numbers of workstations was identified and made available to all employees in the most energy efficient building so that they do not have to um, do not have to do without anything in their daily work. So they were able to re re work remote, but they were also uh, able to come to the office with uh, everything um, provided for them. Because uh, office work, however, remains feasible without anyone having to limit uh, themselves or cut back. Um, it requ uh, workplaces required by employees in the energy efficient buildings and offices that are now available also can be easily uh, reserved and booked using our tool, our booking tool provided. So being able to see where is their space, where can I work, uh, instead of uh, going to the office and thinking, oh, I don't have any space if I go there. So really facilitating the employee uh, in there. Um, and with these options for implementing hybrid working methods and sustainability operating buildings, uh, Workplace has, Workplace our solution um, has achieved a future oriented energy management and the desired cost reduction also for, for Merck. Um, obviously they saved a lot of money with implementing this and understanding what was happening in their buildings. And we've even talked with some, some clients that the money that has been saved um, could return back to the employees, either as a bonus or an opportunity uh, for better professional uh, development, such as uh, courses um, or better equipment at home. Uh, like think of paying your um, the internet connection of your employees um, to really facilitate your employees. So it's a win-win for both your uh, the employer and um, and the employee to uh, and to facilitate hybrid work. So first of all, thank you for listening to me at the past 30 minutes, I think. Um, uh, lastly, we have a Q&A session uh, and we already received one during the last 30 minutes uh, from one of the attendees from Anna, who actually says, I'm gonna quote her, um, we are considering implementing a smart building solution such as Space Wells. What best practices are covered in managing the hybrid workplace with your solution? Um, as mentioned before, um, like I said, like having a solution, uh, like a smart building solution doesn't immediately solve all hybrid working challenges because there is several things such as communication that technology can't solve, right? I mean, it can facilitate it, but it can't really solve better communication. Um, so it mainly contributes to a technology integration, but also uh, looking at team building and, and open culture uh, because be being able to introduce a smart building solution shows transparency towards your employees, uh, how the building is used, uh, also uh, boosts productivity and efficiency uh, for a hybrid working model. And um, I think uh, it's a mix of a lot of things, but being able to provide your employees a safe uh, working environment where you can uh, um, use everything to your benefit, but also to the world's benefit, or even getting it back to you as an employer, as a bonus. Like I said in the example, uh, I think that's how it can uh, can really contribute it to, to make work more efficient, but also not, uh, not to be forgotten, more fun. Um, uh, given the time, we really have to uh, close off slowly. Um, but I really want to thank you for listening to me um, and being present at today's webinar. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to me either via LinkedIn or uh, send me an email on the email address that you see on the screen right now. No worries, you'll receive the slide so you can copy my super difficult email address uh, from the slide instead of having to remember it. Um, and also, if there are any other questions that you have regarding smart building solutions or workplaces, please don't uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us um, or to me personally. And for now, uh, I want to thank you and uh, have a nice rest of your day. Thank you.